This is the surgical video of an endoscopic endonasal approach for a pediatric craniopharyngioma. The approach can be described as transphenoidal, transtuberculum, and transchasmatic sulcus approach. It provides a pituitary chasmatic corridor to the supracellar region, both the infra and retrochasmatic spaces, the infundibulum, the floor, the third ventricle, and the hypothalamic region can be accessed. This is ideal for craniopharyngiomas, all types except purely interventricular. Also for tuberculum cell meningiomas and other meningioma types and other supracellar lesions. These are anatomic essentials, the medial and lateral optic carotid recesses. The importance of the limbus of the sphenoid, which marks the separation between planum sphenoidale and chasmatic sulcus. It also marks the location of the optic canal. The anatomy of the superior hypophyseal arteries and their branches. And here is the surgical corridor illustrated, giving us access to the location of the tumor in the tuber infundibular region. Key to remember these two landmarks, the retrochasmatic sulcus and the premamillary sulcus when working into the hypothalamic region. Hypothalamus can be divided into anterior, intermediate and posterior portions. And these are key landmarks to define these different areas of the hypothalamus. This is a lateral view. We can again see the retrochasmatic sulcus, premamillary sulcus, dividing the areas of the hypothalamus and all the nuclei that are contained within each area. A step by step description of the procedure there are four different stages one, skull based approach, two, cisternal vascular surgery, stage three, hypothalamic supial dissection plane, and a stage four, multi layer skull base reconstruction. On a stage one, it's key to perform a wide exposure all the way to the medial OCR, but not too long, it's short, limited by the limbus of the sphenoid. And the exposure includes drilling the floor of the cella to facilitate mobilization of the pituitary gland inferiorly as needed. Stage two, dissection of the superior hypophyseal arteries and their branches and the ICA perforators. And also, as we go into the retrochasmatic space, the posterior communicating artery becomes the most important branch to remember. Next stage, the key hypothalamic supial dissection technique that allows us to preserve the hypothalamus and dissect the tumor of the hypothalamic attachment. And finally, the multilayer reconstruction with collagen, fascia lata, nasocetal flap, and the key addition of a lumbar drain placement for three days to prevent CSF leakage. Pitfalls include pituitary dysfunction, vascular injury, hypothalamic injury, CSF leak and meningitis. Variants of the approach include the extension into the pounds fenidale anteriorly or combination with a transclival approach by performing a pituitary transposition or even a pituitary sacrifice when indicated. Alternatives to the proposed approach include transcranial macrosurgical approaches and uh, radiotherapy. The reason why we believe the transphenoidal approach is the best is because it provides a direct corridor to the tumor, a unique exposure of the infracasmatic and retrochasmatic territory with a direct visualization of the hypothalamic dissection plane. Here is the preoperative imaging of this patient, 13 year old, presented with a slow growth, decreased vision, headaches, low energy. We can see the tumor extending to the hypothalamus, typical of a tuber infundibular craniopharyngioma. We have now started the operation, raised a nasohepital flap, and opening the sphenoid channels bilaterally, removing the bone that covers the dura of the pituitary gland. You see how we drill now the tuberculum cell area. And very importantly, we extend our exposure all the way lateral to expose the anterior wall of the cavernous sinus. The floor of the cella needs to be also exposed. This drilling goes along the anterior wall of the cavernous sinus so we can expose it, remove the bone covering the clinoidal segment of the carotid artery, and this is key to expand our approach laterally. Now we're drilling across the tuberculum cella and into the precasmatic sulcus, and from here towards the limbus of the sphenoid, which represents the anterior landmark of the exposure. We can see there the limbus of the sphenoid. We're quadrating the dura along the tuberculum, and we start opening the two layers that cover the pituitary gland. We open towards the cavernous sinus wall on each side, and then towards the clinoidal carotid artery also on each side to maximize the exposure of the pituitary gland. 
Now we cut the dura across the tuberculum cell and superior intercarpenoid sinus, and this is the oblique cut I like to do towards the limbus of the sphenoid on each side, and this maximizes the exposure of the supracellular space. Then I fold the dura towards the distal dural ring on each side. I cut the diaphragma cella, and this allows me to see the coronary artery supraclinal space very early in the operation. I also coagulate the floor of the cella and I cut it to manipulate the pituitary gland more easily. I start the cisternal portion of the operation where I identify the descending branch of the superior hypophysial artery which I'm transecting so I could mobilize and then preserve the main trunk of the superior hypophysial arteries bilaterally. It's key to identify the branches going to the tumor and preserve the branches that are going to the optic apparatus and potentially to the infundibulum if it's to be saved. Some coagulation of the capsule allows me to start doing intracapsular dissection and debulking. See how we preserve that other perforating branch from the coronary artery. Wide opening of the capsule of the tumor. There is no stock to be preserved in the anterior aspect of this tumor. We start debulking the calcifications within the tumor, typical of a craniofaryngioma. And now we start seeing tissue that is more compatible with uh, infundibulum. We use this technique where we do a intracapsular dissection. We preserve the capsule of the tumor, which is formed by residual infundibulum. And this dissection of the tumor of the capsule that is formed by the infundibulum is key for preservation of the stock. We are now exposing the key area at the floor of the third ventricle where the hypothalamic attachment and origin of the tumor is found. We do very careful meticulous dissection here to separate what is obviously tumor from normal hypothalamic tissue. Visualization of this area is outstanding by the endonasal approach. Sharp dissection allows me to detach the tumor and once the tumor is detached I can uh, pull the capsule of the tumor off but not before. The key is to perform sharp dissection from the hypothalamus before any pulling or traction of the tumor is attempted. Attachments superiorly are not so concerning. The concern is the attachment at the floor of the third ventricle and inferior walls of the third ventricle the hypothalamus is located. These have been detached and I can continue dissecting the remainder of the capsule. We can see the foramen of Monroe superiorly with the thalami. This is a small attachment to the thalamus. This is not tumor origin, just capsule attachment. It can be dissected easily. And I keep working on bringing the whole tumor cyst capsule down. The hypothalamus is visualized on both sides. The thalamus superiorly. We can see the mass intermedia. We can see the anterior commissure superiorly with the angle endoscope. And finally, the reconstruction. Collagen inlay, fascellata graft, onlay, and then the septal flag covering the whole skull base defect and reinforced with surgery cell and with fibrin glue. Patient had an excellent outcome with gross total resection, preservation of the stock, although with mild postoperative diabetes insipida, just needing one dose in the night time and no other complications, particularly the hypothalamic region completely intact and nicely preserved. Thank you.